Uh, Neil, Ukraine has received almost universal support, political, diplomatic and financial, following the Russian invasion. Why not the same for Israel? Well, it's bizarre, isn't it? Because what we're witnessing here is basically the clash of civilization against barbarism. And it's astonishing that we see these vast uh, demonstrations in favor of barbarism. That Israel is a beacon of enlightenment and Western values in a sea of failed states, autocratic monarchies, and basket case countries. And uh, these people who are marching for uh, so-called free Palestine are basically supporting the kind of world that Israel is surrounded by, which is a total failure in modern humanitarian terms. Uh, and uh, yes, I'm in favor of free Palestine, but Hamas does not uh, in any way represent freedom you know, it's a mm. death cult organization which is in favor of genocide of, against Jews. And that anybody in the West, with the freedoms that we've got, could be supporting the kind of values that this horrific organization stands for. It's beyond anybody's understanding, in my view. Well, indeed, I'm labeling it as rebadged Nazism. Now, Christine, Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East. They share our values of freedom and the rule of law. Their war is our war, isn't it? Yes, indeed, their war is our war. And Jews are the most persecuted nation. They've been persecuted for thousands of years. And yes, their war is our war. They are dying for that war. And the idea that you can even begin to equate what Hamas has done to what the Israelis are doing now in self-defense is, to me, just totally unacceptable and totally ludicrous. There is no parallel. Uh, they are defending themselves. And it's all very well for Hamas and other people and all these do-gooders in the Labour Party to say they shouldn't be doing it. What the hell are they supposed to do? Just sit there and let Hamas take over and push them all into the sea? That's what they're chanting for, from the river to the sea, which means utterly obliterate Israel and chuck the Jews out. That is what they're wanting. And that is what is happening on the streets of London, which I find deeply disturbing, deeply offensive and horrific, frankly. And the Indeed, uh, Neil, however, the, the scenes in Gaza, so, so apologies, uh, uh, Christine. Neil, the scenes right. in Gaza are devastating. Uh, in order to eliminate Hamas, which is the military objective of the Israelis, civilians are going to die. Uh, do you think there is an argument for a ceasefire? No, absolutely not. A ceasefire will only help Hamas. I mean, Hamas is a terrorist organization. Um, it, it, that is defined in law in this country, even though the BBC doesn't seem to recognize this. Mm. And uh, you know, they are firing rockets into Israel even now as we speak. Uh, and the horrific scenes of butchery, which uh, we witnessed three weeks ago, the slaughtering of children, uh, the kidnapping and murder of Holocaust victims you know, in their 80s and 90s, the parading of dead bodies of Israeli women naked and, uh, and, uh, and defiled. Um, these are acts of medieval barbarism. You know, the, in the Muslim calendar, the year is 1444. Uh, and uh, you know, this is a metaphor, I think, for what these people stand for medievalist uh, uh, darkness as against Western European enlightenment. Uh, and that's what I said earlier on, is a clash of civilizations in a sense, although what we are fighting in, in the Middle East is civilization fighting barbarism. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think it's possible to equate the two in any shape or form. But of course, the problem is complicated now because we have a huge Muslim population in this country, a significant proportion of which turns a blind eye, at the very least, to the kind of activities of organizations like Hamas. And well, I, I, so, I don't know, Neil, if you can say significant portion. We don't know how many Palestinians, uh, Palestinian supporters in this country, how many Muslims support Hamas. You wouldn't be able to put a figure on that, surely? No, of course I can't put a figure on it. But the fact that, uh, you know, 100,000 people supposedly today are demonstrating in London, uh, uh, also, uh, you know, fundamentally in favor of what Hamas's objectives are, which is the ceasefire can only help Hamas. Uh, there's no word of criticism by the Muslim Council of Britain 
for against the atrocities which were committed a few weeks ago. They, they seek a sort of even-handed view of Israel and the Palestine uh, uh, extremists. You know, there's another organization, Fatah, which is represented by Mahmoud Abbas in the, on the West Bank of, of Jordan, mm. who don't take the Hamas line. We haven't heard anything about them from these people who are demonstrating in, in the streets. Uh, and uh, you know, this, this is the problem that's now being created. That, of course, w one's got natural human sympathy for people who are suffering from Israeli bombardment. But why are, is uh, Israel bombarding Gaza? It's because it's Hamas controlled. And uh, the, 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 effectively, the majority of people who are living in Gaza have supported Hamas control. Indeed. These underground tunnels, which are being used to attack Israel indiscriminately, uh, the civilian sure. population has been under attack uh, for the last 15 or 20 years. Israel well, withdrew from Gaza in 2005, mm -hmm. and that could have been made into uh, uh, you know, a successful uh, a st a separate state, as Israel has been in the last 50 years. But they've decided to seek the path of death and destruction instead of the kind of path which Israel uh, has uh, uh, taken in the last half century, which right. is to create a functioning democracy uh, and you know, a successful capitalist economy in the Middle East. The only one, in fact, the only one. And the only... Uh, the only democracy, of course, Neil, as well. Uh, listen, I take your point. I've been on record as condemning those on marches, uh, calling out uh, the horrible anti-Semitism that we've seen from certain quarters uh, in those demonstrations. But we obviously cannot equate everyone on the marches with support for Hamas. Um, listen, Christine, I want to get to this other showbiz story in just a second. The clock's against us. But you were going to say something about the Labour Party. Oh, was I? Um, you're reading my mind. Well, I mean, Keir I wish I could do that. <laughs> Keir, Keir Starmer's got a major problem on his hand, hasn't he? He's sitting with his backside on a bubbling volcano of his MPs because they are they are split. Just as he thought he was cruising to victory, he's now got a lot of them because of this issue in in Gaza completely divided and it's showing all the anti-Semitism that was there under Jeremy Corbyn mm. and um, uh, what's his name? Starmer thought that he quashed all that, but he hasn't. And this issue has now brought it bubbling back up. Well, Corbyn I'm really glad you well. mentioned it. I'm glad you mentioned it, Christine, because we're going to be discussing it with my top pundits in just a few oh. minutes. But something can else I, I just, want to ask you I about just, before you go, Christine, can, before you get back to I that bottle think, of, of Shabley. Go, go on, Christine. Can I just say one? I just want to say one more thing about the Gaza situation. If Hamas wanted to show any good intent at all, they could release those hostages. Yeah. But they won't. And that, frankly, that to me sums up their bad intent. That's a very Sorry astute observation. You're absolutely right. Well, the developing story now, Christine and Neil, in the world of showbiz, and the daughter of Richard and Judy, Chloe Maidley, has confirmed that she has split from her husband, rugby star James Haskell, the couple who married in 2018, have fueled speculation about their relationship after the personal trainer emerged without her reading wing as she partied with friends shortly after Haskell was pictured chatting to a mystery blonde outside a London night spot. Since then, the couple, who star in a reality show about their own lives, have both been seen out on several occasions without their rings. In a joint updated statement shared on Instagram, they said, Chloe and I mutually decided to separate at the end of September 2023. We'd not planned on releasing a statement at this time, certainly not while the television show was airing. But constant speculation about our marriage has unfortunately forced our hand. Now, Christine, you know all about love in the spotlight. Tell me about the pressures of celebrity couples. Well... Neil and I have been married for 40 years. We've been living together for 45 and we met each other over half a century ago. So we've lived through thick and thin and we took our marriage vows and we actually genuinely meant them when we said it. And I think too many, I'm not talking about this particular couple because I know nothing about them. I, I didn't even know who she was married to until uh, this evening. Um, I have no idea about them, but I think too many people get married in haste. They don't mm. think about the full implications. They don't really think what they are promising. They are mega promises. They are the biggest promises you will ever make in your life. Yeah, well, I and promise to love, honour and obey. <laughs> <laughs> I did not promise to obey. Absolutely not. So, uh, you know, yes, of course, in the spotlight, but... 
they've brought the spotlight on themselves, haven't they? I mean, they've done, as I understand it, they've done this fly on the wall documentary yeah. about their life. They have invited the whole world to see their marriage from the inside. And I, you know, I just read one article in the, in the press about it um, because I knew we were going to be talking about it. They have invited people right into their marriage and clearly their marriage is, is not as, it is extraordinary. They have a baby of 14 months and apparently it's been falling apart for quite a long time. Mm. What in God's name did they think they were doing getting married in the first place? I mean, if you can't survive the first year or so and producing a baby together, why did you get married in the first place? You must question why. You put your hand up, Mark. Are you about to get divorced? No, what I want to say, thank God that you two got married and thank God that Neil has been <laughs> obeying you ever since. He's absolutely right. Christine is she who must be obeyed, but not her indoors, <laughs> her everywhere, her on GB News. Uh, listen, brilliant to have you well, both on the programme. A match made in heaven. We'll catch up soon. My thanks to Neil and Christine Hamilton. Uh, go and get stuck into that bottle of vino. Lovely to have your company. Aren't they great, those two? And I feel like Neil put that tie on for his appearance this evening, and I'm deeply flattered.